Um, so today we are finishing, or not finishing, but continuing to explore this idea of the kingdom of God. And uh, today I want to talk about the connection between healing and the kingdom of God. Uh, the, uh, the point of this kingdom teaching that we've been going through since the first uh, 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 earlier on is that we desire to see more of the rule and reign of God in our lives, right? We want that because we want what God wants. We, this is the idea of the kingdom. Whatever God wants is what we want to happen here on earth in Jesus' name. And, and as I said a moment ago about what does God want? Well, the kingdom we know from Romans is right. Righteousness, it's peace, it's joy in the Holy Spirit. It's, it's also things like life, it's health. And uh, so we're going to kind of zero in on that. These are some of the elements of the kingdom of God. And this is what we mean by the kingdom of God is God's rule and reign. So if you don't have your Bible open yet, why don't you open it to Luke's gospel today, chapter 9. And uh, we'll, we'll look at verses 1 to 6 and then skip to verses 10 and 11. Now, so, so this, this idea of the kingdom being established includes his healing power in our lives. And I want you to see today as we read our text the connection between the kingdom of God and healing. There's, a, there's an incredible connection that's made by the Lord himself as he speaks. Now, these first words that we're going to read right now are Jesus' instruction to his 12 uh, disciples. And, um, and so uh, let's pick it up in verse 1 of Luke chapter 9. When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. He, and he sent them out to, watch this now, preach the kingdom of God and what? And heal the sick. You see the connection there, everybody? Got that? Okay, so preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. And verse 3, he told them, take nothing for the journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra tunic. Talk about living uh, in a way that you're just trusting God, right? <laughs> you're going to make a trip, but you're not packing anything. You're just trusting God the whole way. Wow, that would have been a lot of uh, fun, but at the same time, a lot of trepidation, if you know what I mean. So it says, uh, and this was a culture in which people were hospitable in this way, so it made sense. But verse 4, whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that town as a testimony against them. So they set out and went from village to village, preaching the what? Gospel or the good news and doing what? Healing, Healing people everywhere. Good. Now skip to verse 10. They are already doing all this stuff and now they come back and it says in verse 10, when the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. Then he took them with him and they withdrew by themselves to a town called Bethsaida. But the crowds learned about it and followed him. He welcomed them and, watch it again, spoke to them about the, what is it? Kingdom of God and he healed those who needed healing. Tracking with me so far? So you, you're catching this idea that there is this connection. Now, in the next chapter, and you don't have to turn there, but you can if you want, Luke 10, uh, 8 through 10, we see, so that was, those were instructions he gave to his 12 disciples. But there was also a group of 72 that were kind of connected to Jesus and were being discipled as well. We don't hear often about them, but, but he did uh, speak to them at times. And so here's him speaking to them in Luke uh, 10, 8. He says, when, it, when you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is set before you, and here it is again, heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God is near you. All right. So there's this, this connection between the kingdom and healing. Now, if you're tempted to think, well, that's okay for the 12 and the 72, that was back then and this is now, uh, I'm going to help you be corrected in that because uh, in this very familiar, this will be up on the screen, Matthew 28, we know this, we call this the Great Commission. And uh, Hopefully it's going to be on the screen. Oh, beautiful. There it is. So uh, Matthew 28, 19 says, therefore go. He's speaking to those disciples. Probably the 72 were included in that group at this time. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And watch this verse. And teaching them to what? Obey everything I've commanded you. So if he said, go preach the good news of the kingdom, we're to preach the good news of the kingdom. And if he said to go heal the sick, we're to go and heal the sick. Each each generation of disciples are to teach the next generation the things we've been commanded all the way back to the first group from the Word of God. Amen? 
Amen? So we're preaching the gospel today, which is good news of the kingdom, and we're going to heal the sick in Jesus' name. In fact, you may be here today, and uh, you have some ailment or some pain or something like that. I'm going to believe by the time we get to the end of this message, there will be a, a, a upswelling of faith that will take place in the midst of us, and we're going to see some good things happen today. We're going to see some people really set free. And by the way, this includes, uh, and we'll talk about this somewhat, but this includes emotional uh, things. This includes men, uh, all of our sorrows. Jesus, when he died on the cross, he died for all that stuff. In Jesus' name, today's the day. So let's start by praying, and then we'll get uh, concluding, getting on with the message here today. Lord, thank you uh, for everyone gathered here today and anyone who'll be watching uh, this uh, later online. God, I thank you for the opportunity we have to share your word and to preach it. Thank you for this uh, amazing uh, opportunity that we have also to be gathered together. We don't take this lightly. We thank you that we are able to gather at this time. We pray for health and safety upon everyone that's a part of Praise Center. We pray that this, this place where we gather, Lord, will, that you'll continue to keep us healthy. You'll keep us, uh, anyone from get, contracting any disease of any kind, including the virus we're so concerned about in these days. But Lord, I pray for grace upon us all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Have you ever left the house and uh, you have this nagging feeling like you're forgetting something, but you can't remember what it is? Yeah. Uh, okay. A few of you can relate to that. Okay. Uh, like, like you, maybe you say, you, you realize, oh, I forgot to comb my hair. Or in my case, you forget that you don't have, <laughs> have hair, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Seriously, I, I, it's weird because I've looked in the mirror, you know, every day probably, but since I lost most of my hair, but I keep forgetting that I am bald. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I look and I go, who's that guy? Oh yeah, that's me. <laughs> I have this idea, I don't know why, that I still have hair. <laughs> but I haven't seen a comb or used one in like 14 years probably. So anyway, but last week, um, I had been at the church. I had some appointments in the morning. I was working, and I, about mid-afternoon, the, the day was basically done for me, and I had a project at home, and, and actually, uh, Lonnie came and helped me at one point, we, uh, but I appreciate that so much. Uh, his job was to stand on planks while I hammered them together, but uh, that was, you did a great job, Lonnie. <laughs> no, he helped me more than that. So anyway, we joked about that. So, so we're, I'm installing some new flooring in our downstairs, and uh, I had the, you know, the afternoon, the late afternoon was free, so I I went after that and uh, so so when I left the church, I had on long pants and long socks and, you know, I was just dressed normally as you kind of see me today. And then I went home and I, because it was warm afternoon, I changed it, which we'll probably not see again for about five months now, but, um, but uh, I mean the warm afternoon. So anyway, I get home and I change it to a t-shirt and some shorts. And as I'm changing into the shorts, I look and I still had long black socks on. And I thought, that, that's not a good look, but, but I'm alone at home. Nobody, this wasn't one of the days that Lonnie was going to be there, honestly. So I thought, who cares? It's just me alone at home, right? Yeah. So I'm not trying to impress anybody. So I thought, yeah, I'm not going to change my socks. I'll just leave them on. Well, about 20 minutes later, I forgot all about that thought right there and realized I needed something at the store. <laughs> you're, you're thinking ahead. I can see that. So it wasn't until I got in the hardware store, of all places, a hardware store, you know, go in manly, manly, and I walk in and, and suddenly I'm that guy. I'm that old dude you see around town with shorts on and long black socks. That was me. How did this happen? How did I get to this place? You know? And I've wondered how many of those guys that I've mocked in the past that I've seen like that we're just forgetful like me and forgot they and didn't change their socks. So I just want a public service announcement. If you see me around town wearing shorts and long black socks, just pray for me, right? <laughs> pray. Pastor, pray for Pastor. Just say, oh, Lord, bless him. Help him remember to change his socks. Sometimes uh, we, think, we think, like, why don't we see more healing? Why don't we see more of the advance of the kingdom? We preach about it. We talk about it. And I wonder if we just forget, honestly, like I forgot about my socks. I wonder if we just forget what God has made available to us. Don't you think sometimes we just get so busy in life and we get so wrapped up and we're doing this and doing that or being so entertained or whatever it is or we're consumed with the news and we're consumed with all kinds of things and we just get out there and we just forget that we are citizens of the kingdom of God. And, and so I'm just saying, I, I'm just trying to hopefully remind us today that, that, that God has made great things available, including healing. Amen. 
He is a healer. He is the healer. That's, that's one of the four foundational teachings of, of what is called a four-square church. And, and we don't talk much about our denomination, but there's, there's four things that we believe about Jesus Christ. That he's the Savior, he's the healer, he's the baptizer in the Holy Spirit, and he's the soon-coming king. Now, there are many more things we believe about Jesus, but number two on that list is he's our healer. And uh, in fact, the whole denomination was birthed out of a great revival in which countless healings took place. They used to have at Angelus Temple, which was the first uh, place that the Foursquare Gospel Church was, they had a, uh, and it used to be much bigger, but I saw it in later years. It was probably, a, it was like a trophy case that you'd see at a high school, okay? And, and so by the time I saw it, it was much smaller. They had moved some of the items out of it. But it was probably from my hand to that wall over there, just this long series of trophy cases. And inside the trophy cases were iron lungs, braces, casts, um, all kinds of devices, things where people who had dentures before, they had new teeth, and so the dentures were left there. And each one of them had a little plaque with a story beside it of the amazing things that God had done. Listen, I just think God wants to return to that time. Here's why. Not just to meet our needs, which He wants to do, but there's something integral about the gospel being connected to healing that attracts people. What do you think people were so excited about Jesus for? I mean, you know, teaching is good, and He taught like nobody and he blew their minds but the thing that got them all started to listening to him in the first place hello was the fact that people were being healed people were being raised from the dead people they used to know who sat there for years and couldn't walk were suddenly up walking around you know and it, the word spread quickly people who were possessed by demons were being delivered so so listen all that to say that, that we need to grasp and get a hold we don't want to forget that God is our healer in Jesus name now, if some of what I say today uh, starts to sound familiar to some of you, that's because I am repeating myself on some of these things, because this is a teaching that I need to keep bringing up from time to time. I, I, it's interesting to me that I can, I can teach certain principles and things, in, doctrinal things in our church, and later I'll be listening to a conversation or someone will be talking to me, and I'll hear them say something and I realize, you didn't get it when I preached it last time. I'm not looking at anyone in particular, but you know, I'm just saying. So I just, I'm praying today. I really am believing that what I say today will get through to us and we'll stop just believing wrong doctrine about this. It is important what we believe because if we, if our faith is wavering, if we doubt, then we're like the waves of the sea, James says. We won't get what we ask of God if we don't have the kind of faith. So I'm saying this today to help us get some faith today. Is that all right? Amen. All right. So. So uh, let, me, let me say to all of us as servants of God, and really lock this down, first thing I want you to grasp about the kingdom, which I've talked about for weeks now, but I want you to just let this sink down, is that we are citizens of the kingdom of God right now. Yeah. Notice those last two words, right now. Not pie in the sky someday, but now we are citizens of the kingdom of God. And as citizens of the kingdom of God, under the authority of our king, Jesus Christ, his orders to his subjects are to preach that good news and to heal the sick. Now, God is a God who wants to heal people. And here's, here, here's something else to lock down. And I want you to, this is the one where I hear people mess, miss what I'm saying or they don't remember it. They, they walk out with their black socks, long black socks on, okay? <laughs> Listen carefully what I say right now and lock this into your heart. It is the will of God to heal people. It is the will of God to heal. Okay? Now I'm going to walk you through that, through this message today, but I really want you to take this. So let's explore this first. Let's go, let's go here first. Uh, and let me uh, go to first the origin of sickness. That's our first point. What is the origin of sickness? Where does it come from? There are countless stories of healings in the, in the Bible and many more, as I just described, from revivals in the past. And how many of you here, at one point in your life, you felt like God truly healed you of something? Like you felt like, so, so here's a bunch of testimonies here, and my hand is raised as well. And so, uh, so we, but we stumble a bit. We forget sometimes these basic truths about healing. First of all, here, let's, let's think this through, because we're talking about the origin of sickness. God is all-powerful... Amen? Yeah. But in his omnipotence, which is a word for, it means all-powerful. So in his omnipotence, he has determined that there are certain things he will not do. In fact, he cannot do them. So you're going, wait, I thought God could do anything. No, no. God cannot sin. Right? God cannot do evil. 
God cannot violate his own nature. So though he's all powerful, there are things he cannot do. Do you agree with me? That's the way I put it. Okay. Second, if I were to ask you, did God create everything? The answer, of course, is yes. Yes, that's good. But listen, when God created everything, he created it in its original order as good and perfect. Okay. There are a great many things that exist today that God is not responsible for. For example, God created a being whose name was Lucifer. We know this from the Old Testament. He was an anointed cherub, an angel, if you will, an angelic creature. He was the, 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 the chief of all the angelic creatures that, that were before the throne of God. This happened before the creation of the world. And, and he was very, very beautiful, apparently, and, and, and had the appearance of sparkling jewels and gems. God created him like, a, like no other angelic being there was. And... Uh, but through his own pride and, and through his own rebellion, this creature thought he would ascend to God's throne, and the Bible tells us he was cast out of heaven. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Well, when did you see that? Well, before the world was created, because Jesus has always existed, he saw Satan fall like lightning because he was cast down out of heaven. Okay? Now, the point is that God created this being, Lucifer, who was beautiful and, and at one time glorified God, but then what Lucifer became was not God's doing. In other words, God didn't create the devil. Sink it in. Okay, lock that down. That being we call the devil or Satan exists because of his own rebellion against God. This is very important to understand this. Let me give you another example. This is maybe a little more practical. Does darkness exist? Does it? What is darkness? Now ah, you're starting to get it. I mean, every night on, on this planet, we experience darkness, but what is it really? It, the truth is darkness does not exist. It is simply the absence of light. If, if something is dark, you can't get something to make it darker. You can't go to the store and buy darkness, but you can buy light bulbs. Right? You don't buy dark bulbs. Like, man, this room's too bright. We need some dark bulbs. Right? So listen, so darkness only exists where light does not. Tracking? All right. This, these are important. You say, what does this have to do with healing? Why is this important? Because we have to get our thinking straight about God. We have to start by realizing, number one, He is not the source of sickness and pain. God, help us in this moment, I pray, in Jesus' name to get this. These things exist because through sin on planet Earth, God's presence and will, what He wanted for people, was removed in ways, and that, what was left behind when the light was removed, was darkness. Tracking? So He's not the source of it. It exists because He got pulled out of it by our sin. Second, everything that happens on planet Earth, this is going to be a biggie for some of you because I hear in conversations, you still haven't got this straight, and I'm not picking on you today. If, if what I say, you're like, this is messing with you, I'd be glad to sit down and go through this further, but you've got to get this. Everything that happens on planet Earth is not God's will. Yeah. Right. Right. Jesus, help us. Everything that happens on planet Earth is not God's will. I don't know how we could serve a God whose will it was that children be sex trafficked. Right. Now that's an extreme example, but you, you understand where, okay? And yet there are scores of believers who are misinformed and mistaught that believe that everything that happens and they'll say happens for a reason. And then they say, well, God has a plan. Right. Listen, I'm going to say it right now. And I know lightning will not strike me because I know I'm on the side of God right now. But if that's the kind of God we have, that he, he does that kind of thing to people, if He's responsible for that, I refuse to serve that kind of God. I will not. I mean that with my whole heart sincerely. But that is not the God of the Bible. I'm teaching you and I'm telling you the truth today. Again, you know, we hear people say, well, God must have had some purpose. People get sick or injured. Terrible, devastating things happen in people's lives. And because our t thinking is wrong about God, we say, well, God did it or God allowed it for some reason, right? right? See, when people get sick, we think he's using their illness to teach them a lesson. God, confront this thinking in our minds right now. I pray in Jesus' name. Help us to get over this right now. 
Man, I just, I just feel like a miracle is going to happen in our thinking today. See, this to me reduces God to some kind of puppeteer who is either arbitrarily or worse, by direct preference, choosing some to be well and some to be sick, some to live and some to die. Now, I wholeheartedly reject this kind of teaching and view of God. I do. This is not, listen, people throw out the word, the sovereignty of God. This is not what the sovereignty of God is. We are not describing the sovereignty of God when we describe horrible things happening to people. Since the original sin, since mankind made the choice to rebel against the will of God, quite a bit of what happens on planet Earth is not orchestrated by God and not His will at all. In fact, if you think about it, it's a wonder that we see as much good as we do on planet Earth. As much sin as there is, right? See, God, listen, again, let me, I'm saying this in so many different ways. God did not create evil. God did not create sickness. Now, keep listening to me. Keep listening. God does not use sickness to teach people lessons. He can, and He does, work all things together for good. So He can take your... this is Because I think the reason people say the things they do about God like that, like, oh, you know, the, God has a purpose in all this, because they want something redeeming to come out of this terrible pain that they're in, or this terrible sickness, or the death of a loved one. They want something to be redeemed in there. But that's the wrong way to look at it is to say that God was responsible for it. And that's not the way to look at it. He can work things out for good. He can take what you and I are going through and He'll work it out for good. That's the miracle. Yeah. Even the worst situation, if I'm never healed from the pain I'm experiencing every day in my back and foot, if I'm never healed from that, but God can still get good out of it. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. And I'm not dissuaded for one moment that God wants to heal me. I never have lost my, my, my faith in God to believe that He wants me to be experiencing full and complete healing right now. I believe it with my whole heart. Acts 10, 38 on the screen says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how He went around doing good and healing all who are under the power of the devil. Where's the, where's the, do you see the connection between the sickness and where its source is, is the power of the devil. Why did he do that? Because God was with him. He went around doing good. God is good. He's only good and he's all the time good. And it's impossible for evil or sickness to emanate from God. Can't happen. There are things God can't do and those things cannot, God cannot do. So if we don't get our thinking straight about God, and we, as I said earlier, we're going to end up double-minded or unstable and to have the kind of faith we need to see healing in our own lives and in the lives of those around us. So we conclude that He is our healer, that He is not the origin of these things. And then our second and final point is this. Healing is, I said earlier, the will of God. Yeah. Healing is the will of God. I started to get on this topic a couple of weeks ago. If you were here, you noticed, and I remember walking over here and kind of getting in this mode, like I'm about ready to preach my sermon that's two weeks later, and I stopped myself, and I only said a little bit. But I did bring up the, I addressed the Lord's Prayer. Do you remember this? If you were here, I said, remember the first request in the Lord's Prayer is, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we agree that there is no sickness or pain in heaven. And we're instructed in this prayer that the Lord gave us, to pray for the will of God that is in heaven, where no sickness or pain is, to be established here on earth. Now, why would Jesus instruct us to pray that way unless he intended that our prayers be answered? So that's the part I kind of gave away a couple weeks ago. But the reason I went into all this is so that we can understand that wherever we can, as citizens of the kingdom of God, we can bring the kingdom. See, see as I said, there, you can't create darkness, but light can invade darkness. And you are, it says in Ephesians, we're like shining stars in the universe. Each one of us is a light. Jesus himself said, I'm the light of the world. But he also said, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world wherever you go. And so when you and I, as citizens of the kingdom, walk into a dark place, whether that's at work, whether it's at school, whether it's in the marketplace, whether it's in a, a home that we're in, going into, wherever we go, we bring the light of Jesus and light begins to overcome overtake the darkness and that includes the healing power of God and as we do this as we invade the the in the supernatural as we begin to invade those places we will see evil overcome we'll see darkness turn to light we'll see sickness replaced with health in Jesus name 
Now, as we keep going down this path toward healing, which, by, by the way, includes emotional and mental well-being, too. I just want to make sure you understand that, he, he did, he, as I said earlier, he died for your sorrows. He died for all those things. We have to re remove that roadblock that says that sickness is the will of God for people. It is not. This is what gives rise to prayers. You may have heard these before. You may have prayed a prayer like this. If you have, just repent today and say, I'll never do that again. You've heard them, though. People will pray, dear God, please heal so-and-so if it is your will. Now, praying for God's will is a good thing. I got awfully quiet right then, didn't it? I heard no amens or anything. That sounded like a good prayer, Sal. I, I don't know what we should say right now. Listen, praying God's will it can be, or it sh excuse me, is a good thing. But there are certain things we know that are God's will. So we don't need to say if it's your will. Like, for instance, uh, we wouldn't pray for a relative. Oh, Lord, please save my brother Jacob. Or God, please save my sister Maria. We would never say that if it's your will, would we? Because we know, because the scripture says, he's not willing that any should perish. So we have established the will of God for human beings. Uh, and all you Calvinists out there, uh, sorry, but you're wrong. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I can't even get on that tangent right now, please. Okay. See, some of this teaching comes from, from, and I'm not saying they're not saved people, but there are churches that teach the opposite of what I'm teaching you today. And I'm right, and they're wrong. Amen. Thank you. Had one. Good. I heard another over there somewhere. Okay. So, so please listen to me. We don't pray regarding salvation if it's God's will. We know it's His will. And do not pray for healing if it's God's will because it is God's will. Just pray for the healing. Now, if it doesn't happen, you're not on the hook for that. God is. Just leave it with God. Don't worry about it. But, but it's sort of like we put that clause in there, if it be thy will, j just in case. Like, whew, that lets me off the hook. Now, obviously, it wasn't God's will, so, dude, you're just going to have to be sick the rest of your life. Do you, as we start thinking this through, we go, yeah, Pastor Sal is right. Yeah. Okay. I love, there's a great book called uh, God Still Heals by Jim Garlow. And in his book, he writes this. He says, when children get sick, their parents want them to get well. We would never say to a parent, I hope your child gets well if that's what you want. Am I right? Okay. All good parents want their children to be well. There are many good earthly fathers, but our heavenly father is better than any of us. Can you imagine God saying to himself, I think I'd like for my child to be ill for just a little bit longer. It is always God's will for his children to be well. Lock it down, church. Lock it down. The question may arise, what about, what about other kinds of suffering? Is there in any way that suffering is part of God's will? And, uh, and yes, there is, a, there is a, something different about uh, different kinds of suffering. Um, in fact, Jesus himself suffered terribly, didn't he? And by the way, that was the will of God for Jesus. Because Jesus went to the garden, he said, uh, you know, if it's possible, take this suffering from me, this cup from me, I don't want to go through this. And then what did he say? Not my, but yours be done. You say, wow, okay, what's that about? There's a, another great book called Authority to Heal in which Ken Blue says this. In the New Testament, suffering is sometimes presented positively, but sickness, listen, never is. He goes on to point out that the word suffering in the English language includes sickness. So when we use the word suffering, we think, oh, that includes sickness. But in the New Testament, in the Greek language, suffering always refers to the pain of persecution inflicted by persons or demons. So it's something you're experiencing that's persecution. It's somebody coming after you, and that can be physical. But in our culture, sometimes it's more like emotional or mental, like there, there's pain that we're suffering because we're standing up for Jesus, hopefully, in our marketplace. All right? And yes, we're going to suffer for Christ. And what we'd even lay down our lives and die for Him. I'd take a bullet for the Lord right this moment. I would never waver from that. And so and, and in that... That could be the will of God. So, do you understand the, the stark difference between those two? Okay? Big difference. There are two different categories. And one is due to persecution, and the other is just has to do with the kinds of sickness and pain we experience on planet Earth. The key here is Jesus. The key is Jesus. 
By his suffering, he obtained salvation and healing for us. By our suffering, not in sickness, we can also, listen, that's the distinction right there. We will suffer, but it won't be in sickness that it's the God, God's will. Okay, that's where we have to separate it. So we can testify of our faith in God. And I can confidently preach this truth to you today, even though I, again, have not received all of my healing yet. But I don't base my truth on my experience, but I base my truth on the Word of God. In Jesus' name. Worship team, come on back. I got a little bit more. Are you okay? Can I, can I just preach to you a little bit longer here today? See, when we misunderstand the nature of God and forget that He's good, it's like we're walking around with long black socks on and shorts. I mean, we are not representing God or His kingdom very well at that point. <laughs> All right, you with me? The kingdom of God exists now. There's a future fulfillment, that's for sure. But and in that, there will be no more sin, no more sickness, no more Satan, none of that. But, but as we're working toward that, we want to experience as much of the kingdom of God as we possibly can. You with me? So let me finish by talking about Job. Everybody brings up Job at this point. I'm going to talk to you about Job. In the book of Job, Job, you know his story, how uh, he starts out, everything's great, and then the, everything goes off the rails. I mean, he loses property, he loses livestock, he loses his kids, he loses uh, his own health. And the only thing that's left is his wife, which he probably wished would have gone with the family, because she says, why don't you just curse God and die? That's all he has left. And, we, and people will use the story of Job to say, see, this is what God does to people sometimes, because he wants to teach them a lesson. These are things that Job says. He says, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. We used to sing a song like that. Another time in Job 2.10, he says, Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Another thing he says later on, he says, Though he slay me, yet I will hope in him. Now all that sounds good, doesn't it? Come on. Th doesn't that sound good? I think it sounds good. But, but if you read the whole book of Job, and it's, it's a tough book to get through, but most of the book of Job is a conversation between Job and his so-called friends. They show up in chapter 3, and they, they talk, and they talk, and they, ad, ad nauseum they talk. And uh, they say a bunch of stuff that describes God from their point of view. This is the way I see God. And they say all kinds of stuff like what is wrong that I was telling you today. And then finally, finally we get all the way. Now there's so many chapters. Get up to chapter 38, and here's the key. God has had enough of all this dribble, just stupidity. And he says, he says in Job uh, 38 too, he says, Who is this that darkens my counsel with words without knowledge? Let me translate that into Sal's version. You guys just shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. You aren't describing me well at all. Just be quiet. You're not... He, including you, Job, you don't even know what you're talking about. And so God goes on for three chapters, the next three chapters, and he begins to describe who he really is to Job. Man, it is, it is phenomenal. It's like, wow, there's fire-breathing dragons and all kinds of cool stuff there. No, I'm not kidding, right? So, so anyway, we get to the very end of Job, the last chapter, the first three verses. Job finally responds in chapter 42, and he says this. He says, then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me. Let me give you the Sal version again. Job is admitting to God, you are right in all things, and I don't understand you a bit. It's all that stuff he said earlier, you give and take away. Though he slay me, I will serve, you know, all that stuff. Shall we accept good from God and not evil? Right? He didn't understand what he was talking about. He misinterpreted God. He did not get it. And God is saying, you don't know who I am. The story of Job, listen, who is it that inflicts all the trouble and pain on Job? Is it God? No, you read the story carefully. It's always Satan. Now he asked God, can I go do this? Or you, he first, Satan would come along and he said, you should do this to Job. And God says, nah. You know why God says, nah? Because... He, he can't. He won't. He refuses to treat people like that. And the part that trips us up is God says, well, he's in your hands. 
but he won't curse me. And he, just, he never does, by the way. Even though his wife says, you should just curse God. No, I'm not going to curse God. In fact, it is God who restores everything to him and brings health back to his body. Satan takes away, not God. God gives health in Jesus' name. People say, well, yeah, but God allowed it. God allowed it. Well, that's correct, but allowing something and being the source of something are two very, very different things, people. When my boys were just little, they were crawling, and then they'd pull themselves up on a little coffee table or something, and they'd try to take their first steps. I allowed them to walk, knowing they would stumble and fall and bang their heads and cry and be hurt and experience pain. But I never went around pushing them over. Do you see what I'm saying? You see the difference there? I wanted them to experience life. And sometimes in life there's pain involved, but I was not the source of their pain. Life was the source of their pain. I was the one that rushed to them when they cried, swept them up into my arms, held them tight, and let them know of my love for them. Do you understand the difference? That's God. Get that picture of God in your head right now. That's how He feels about you. That's how He looks at you. So when you stumble, when you hurt, when you're in pain, you can confidently go to the throne of grace and say, Oh, Father, I'm hurting right now. And He sweeps you up. And He gives you what you need. And, and speaking of Job, let me just finish. Rather than seeing that experience as a normal experience, like God's doing this kind of thing all the time, we need to see his ex that experience as like even a rare exception in which the byproduct of his suffering taught Job perseverance and patience, which shows us again that God works things out for good. Job is complimented later, I think, in the book of James. It says that, that he learned patience through all that. He learned to, 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 he, something good came out of it. That's the God part. So always remember this. Let's stand. Always remember this, if suffering is my final word on the matter, unless I say something else. <laughs> this one I want you to really think about with me. If suffering through sickness was part of God's divine plan for mankind, wouldn't there be just one time, just one time, where Jesus, when somebody came to him for healing, that he would have said, no, it's not God's will for that to take place. No, we already read it. He healed all who came to him, all who were oppressed of the devil. He never turned anyone away. He never said, no, you know, he never caused there to be pain. He never caused a, a chariot wreck or someone to get stepped on by a camel. He never caused there to be sickness and leprosy to come upon people. That's not who God is. You'll never find ever Jesus doing anything remotely like that. He preached the good news of the kingdom that included health and healing. He healed all who were under the power of the devil. And he told his disciples to do the same. And then he told his disciples, teach your disciples to obey everything I've commanded you. And those group taught and taught and taught. And here we are today being taught again to do everything he commanded us, including heal the sick. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time we've had together today. Thank you for the, the power of your word and the goodness that you have showed us and the grace that you have given to us in life. Thank you today that your power is here to heal. Lord, even now before we get to finishing up with a song and worshiping you, I pray that your, your spirit will fall upon us in, in power and in strength right now, that everyone that's here will experience a touch from you of some sort or another. And if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I do need health, I do need healing, would you just be bold enough to raise your hand in the air right, nice and high right now? You need something from God. Now, if you're a family member, you can lay hands on them. If you're not a family member, look around real quick and just stretch a hand. Okay, don't touch today, but just stretch a hand. But everybody's going to be praying for people around you right now as I pray. You need health. You need healing from God. Somebody pray for me as I pray for all of you, okay? In Jesus' name. Lord, we command healing to come in the mighty name of Jesus, declaring it is your will in this moment for healing to happen in every heart and life. Lord, we rebuke all sickness. We rebuke all injury, all pain in the mighty name of Jesus. Flee now. 
in Jesus' name. We rebuke all sorrow and, and uh, emotional distress. We rebuke all mental illness and uh, troubles of the mind, Lord God, to go. Be gone now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you that we have authority to heal. We have authority to speak to the darkness, to flee. And we bring light, laser bright light into every heart and home, in every person's body right now. We speak over each person the will of God. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Go ahead. Receive it now. God is doing it. He's doing it now. It's His will. Thank you, God. Sickness must flee. Jesus died on the cross for health, for wholeness, for healing. Believe it. Hold on to it right now. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just stay in that attitude of prayer and worship as we sing this song to the Lord. Weapons may be formed, but they won't prosper. <laughs> Amen.